Hello folks and welcome to the UK car news. Uh, this is the start of July. I might do another one of these later on in a month. Who knows what could happen? Right, let's crack straight on because I've got about a billion stories for you today. So I'm going to whack through these as quickly as possible. And with that, my light's just gone out. So we're in auto car for lots of these actually. Um, starting off here, the best selling cars in Europe so far in 2023. One or two little surprises in there, but largely... Very similar to what we see over here. Number one is the Dacia Sandero, 21,745 sales. That's despite the fact that the Sandero is not the cheap car it once was. Uh, they used to be under eight grand, and I think you're now starting at around about 13, if memory serves me right. Number two is the Tesla Model Y. Number three is the VW T Rock. Number four, the Peugeot 208. Number five, the Renault Clio. Number six, the Vauxhall or Opel Corsa. Number seven, the Toyota Yaris. Number eight, the VW Golf. Nine is the Octavia. And 10 is the Peugeot 2008. Interesting that most of those European cars are small cars. Uh, a little bit different to what we see over here generally. Fiat will no longer be making any grey coloured cars. So this is a bit of a bold statement from Fiat saying that too many grey cars are all a bit boring. We're not going to do it anymore. And let's not forget that grey is the most popular car colour in the UK, bar none. And I guess this idea came about because lots of people in challenging glasses, probably wearing braces and little bow ties, had about 50 mood boards. And, and I bet one of them said, I know, let's get one of our cars. We'll attach it to a crane and dunk it into a load of orange paint. That's exactly what they did with a little publicity stunt. Autocar don't have pictures of that, by the way, but there you go. So you're not going to get a grey Fiat anymore. Uh, Audi replaces CEO days after VW Group says the brand is lagging. The CEO of VW Group itself says that he feels like Audi's lagged a bit in recent years and it's got massive potential that's not currently fulfilling. I have to agree with him. The, um, the quality of modern Audis is not what it was, say, five, six, seven years ago. And uh, they do feel like they've slipped down the pecking order a tad. And as he says, tons of potential with that brand. They've produced some fantastic cars over the years. So maybe this will see a return to form for Audi in the next couple of years. Who knows? How would you like a 100% free entry into a competition to win a Range Rover Sport or an Audi RS5? Well, I've got good news for you. You can have it. Just click the link in the video description. That will take you to the sponsors of today's video, The Good Life Plus, and they'll give you free entry into that competition with no strings attached. Good Life Plus is a prize draw site with way better odds than the lottery. It's got daily prize draws for cash, cars, holidays, and more. There have been over 3,000 winners so far, so don't miss out. Use that link in the video description. And if you do use that link below, not only will you get that completely free entry into the prize draw, it'll also get you 25% off a monthly membership if you decide to go ahead with that. Go and check it out now, folks. It helps support the channel. Thanks. Dacia considers a Citroen Ami rival to tap into new market. The Romanian brand is expanding its lineup and a tiny 2C EV aimed at the ride-sharing market is a possibility. Meh. Ineos Grenadier Quartermaster pickup to make its debut at Goodwood. The open back version of the Grenadier will take on the Hilux in the fearsome pickup segment. Uh, if you don't know about the Ineos Grenadier, it's a Jim Ratcliffe's version of a Land Rover Defender. Uh, you may notice there's a slight resemblance to one and they're doing a pickup version of it. The price of that is going to be absolutely enormous. Uh, no mention of it in here, but it's going to be strong six figures, folks. Interesting one, this. Aston Martin are going to start using Geely for their EV components. Uh, they announced just the other day, actually, that they're going to be using sort of running gear from Lucid, the company that makes the Lucid Air over in California. Until now, they've just been getting electric components from Mercedes, um, but Geely is a shareholder of Aston Martin. And considering Geely owns Volvo, Polestar, Lincoln Co., Lotus, just to name a few, uh, they've certainly got some EV pedigree. So maybe that's a good thing for Aston Martin to tap into. Diesel owners due compensation rules the German Federal Court. Landmark ruling places burden on car makers to demonstrate emission manipulation devices are not illegal. Germany's highest federal court has ruled that car makers must compensate owners of diesel cars equipped with illegal emission manipulation devices. 
The decision follows a protracted class action lawsuit brought against Audi, Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen by diesel car owners in Germany. The court ruled that owners could claim between 5 and 15% of the purchase price of their diesel cars fit with the illegal emission manipulation devices in the case. The ruling has direct implications for similar lawsuits brought against other car makers in Germany. And obviously, this is something that could now spread across the world. So that would be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Certainly, if you've owned a German diesel car that's been caught up in this Dieselgate scandal in recent years. And on that theme, the ex-Audi boss Rupert Stadler has been given a suspended sentence and a 1.1 million euro fine by the German court following the plea deal and admission of guilt. I would guess he was possibly facing some jail time. So instead he's held his hands up, spilt the beans and admitted fault in this. And as such, he walks away with a 1.1 million fine and a suspended sentence. Here's one for all you folks that hate EVs with a passion. VW scales back EV production. Works council head sites strong customer reluctance as shift shortened and holiday period extended. Now VW are saying that this reluctance to buy their EVs from customers is due to a number of factors. One being the fact that government subsidies have pretty much left the building at this stage. Uh, another one being that these parts delays have meant it's been really, really difficult to actually even get an EV if you've ordered one. Um, and same thing still going on with petrol and hybrid cars, by the way. Someone contacted me the other day that's been waiting two years for a Hyundai Santa Fe. But they're the sort of main reasons he said is customer resistance is because of essentially they're not getting any government subsidies, no sort of help from the government to go ahead and buy these cars. And there have been huge delays. I think what he's overlooking is the fact that Apart from a couple of cars in their range, the VW EV range is a bit meh. And uh, certainly the interiors on those cars are really a bit naff considering the price tag on them. Um, if you can get one at a good price, great. But when you want absolute premium money, you have to deliver a premium product. And VW are asking premium money for their EVs. And I don't think it's a particularly premium product in a market that's flooded with very, very stiff competition. So um, I, let's hope this leads to a, a rethink from VW. We know they're working on the ID2 or, so, or something along those lines, which will probably be an electrified Polo. And they are saying that that's going to be available at a more affordable price. So let's hope this um, gets them to remove thumbs from bottoms and actually get with the program and start delivering really good cars that people might potentially be able to afford. Folks, if you've watched any of that Drive to Survive series, the F1 sort of behind the scenes series on Netflix, you'll be familiar with Lance Stroll, who's the new boss of Aston Martin. Uh, he says he should be knighted for the work he's done. And those of you that have watched the show will know that this guy's probably president and chairman of his own fan club. Uh, pfft. Not my sort of chap whatsoever. The ego has landed, folks. He says, I should be knighted for what I've done. I've saved thousands of jobs and built a new Formula One factory with hundreds of millions of investment. The investment is staggering. On long-term success, Stroll said that in my other businesses, I've won. And he expects the same thing to happen at Aston Martin. Best of luck, mate. So Autocar have had a first ride in the new Polestar 5. Look at this. This is going to be the Porsche Taycan rival from Polestar. Um, the pictures are fairly iffy on here, but this is a very handsome looking beast. It's just a first ride of a prototype, so I won't go into too much more detail. MG4 is getting a hot hatch version, the X Power. Hot hatch EV gets 429 brake horsepower and 239 miles of range. And the upgraded powertrain blasts electric pocket rocket from 0 to 62 in 3.8 seconds. And that Tesla Model 3 performance rival is going to cost you 36 and a half grand. New 25 grand electric. Electric Citroen EC3 to launch in October this year. It's going to offer 186 miles of range and it's going to be part of a new C3 lineup, which is also going to have internal combustion engines available. So it's not going to be EV only. The Neo ET5 Touring launches with 482 brake horsepower as the firm's first electric estate. New BMW i5 Touring rival has been developed with a strong focus on driver involvement. Uh, that is quite a good looking car. If you've seen any of the other Neo stuff, um, it all looks nice from a design point of view. The hottest variant's gonna have 201 horsepower motor on the front axle and 281 horsepower motor at the rear. The results are combined 482 brake horsepower, 520 pound foot of torque, and 0-62 time of four seconds. 
It's no slouch, is it? Now, the top end 100 kilowatt hour battery is going to give you a range of 347 miles. It's also going to be a 75 kilowatt battery option that's going to give you 270 miles of range. No mention of pricing or anything at the moment, but obviously that's not going to be a cheap car. New seven seat VW Tayron to arrive in the UK in 2025. First generation Tayron is already sold in China with standard and coupe body styles. Uh, there it is. It's a fairly unimaginative design, I have to say. It looks like a big VW SUV. Indeed, that's what it is. Uh, it's going to be the successor to the outgoing Tiguan Allspace, which is set to be retired. Once again, no real details on price or anything else on, at this stage. Back EV manufacturing to unlock 106 billion by 2030, says the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders. So SMMT have put together this manifesto that they presented to government this week and they're really telling the government to invest and to invest in basically EV infrastructure, EV manufacturing, um, battery manufacturing, all of that because we've potentially got £106 billion of business on the table and if we don't get support from the government, we're not going to have a chance of getting any of that business. That's the gist of it. It's a bit more complex than that. If you want to read more about it, go over to the SMMT website and you can see it all there for yourself without any additional input from any of the media. Toyota could be the next to adopt the agency sales model. Selling cars directly to customer rather than through a dealer may soon extend to mainstream manufacturers. I guess the first to do this in a big way was Tesla. Um, and other manufacturers are now taking a look at this and thinking, well, if we cut out that car dealer in the middle and just sell everything directly, we can keep a bit more margin. They can probably keep the price higher because uh, the dealers obviously always want deals and discounts and everything like that. Be interested to see how this plays out. Uh, it might also mean that things become difficult in the leasing market and the company car market because obviously they're cars that are purchased basically at wholesale. And if this were to happen, you'd have to think that the manufacturers would want to keep hold of that side of the business as well. So this could be a major shakeup. Folks, the world has gone bananas. We're over at Auto Express now for this and indeed for the rest of the stories. The Volvo CEO is saying that an announcement's in, imminent on whether they'll actually continue producing estate cars. Now, to me, Volvo is an estate car. Like That's their bread and butter. That's what they do so well and have done for years. And if Volvo get rid of their estate cars, I'm going to cry. I just... They're the best at it, really, and it seems bananas that they would move away from it, especially at a time when other manufacturers are now starting to talk about post-SUV, uh, feeling the, that people have maybe started to have enough of some of the SUVs. Toyota GR86 to go back on sale in the UK. Toyota anticipates the new batch of GR86s will be another sellout. Obviously, they had to stop taking orders on these because they were limited in numbers and they sold them all very, very quickly. I'm a massive fan of these cars. I think they're gorgeous looking things. And it's good to see Toyota going back to their heritage, really, and producing exciting performance kind of driver's cars rather than just things that take people of a certain age down to Asda. It's going to be a Fiat 600 SUV. It's going to be a little electric SUV. And as you can see, it's just a bit of a, a chubbier version of the Fiat 500. Uh, I've got no doubt that that would be a nice thing to drive because they really nailed it with the little 500e. That's a brilliant little car to drive. And uh, if they're taking basically the essence of that and putting it in something a bit bigger, it'll probably do very well. Uh, hydrogen fuel cell power could be a no-cost option for BMW EV buyers. Hydrogen program boss reveals firm's vision of a fuel cell power future as IX5 hydrogen pilot fleet arrives in the UK. Hydrogen powertrains can be refueled in minutes and could be a no-cost alternative to batteries across a range of BMW electric cars by 2035, as a new compact hydrogen fuel tank technology allows the maker to cheaply package hydrogen storage in vehicles platform designed for both energy sources. Um, this is all well and good, but if you think that the electric car charging network is inadequate, Wait until you see what the hydrogen network's like. There's hardly one at all, really. I can personally, I think hydrogen sounds on paper uh, like a brilliant solution for the future. Um, zero tailpipe emissions, blah, blah, blah. However, they're six times less efficient than a battery electric car. Hydrogen uses tons of electricity to produce 
and it's really difficult to transport. It's that argument you hear constantly down the pub, which is, well, we should use hydrogen. But when you actually learn a little bit more about it, it doesn't seem quite as attractive as it initially looks on paper. I think it's probably got a brilliant future when it comes to maybe industrial uses, but I just cannot see a way where it's going to catch on uh, for private vehicles in a big way. But we'll wait and see. I could be wrong. I have been before. Cost of living crisis sees 25% of drivers avoid car servicing and repairs. More drivers are making the potentially false economy of skipping or delaying car maintenance work, according to an RAC survey. This is probably not helped by the fact that there's so much profiteering going on in just about every industry, um, blaming the cost of living crisis. I need to get our car booked in for service at the moment, and the prices I'm getting quoted for it are just ridiculous, like absolutely daft, in fairness. I made this point to a friend of mine the other day, but it's like the whole supermarket thing. Uh, things have gone from a pound to one pound twenty-five or one pound fifty. Have you seen anything that's gone from a pound to like one pound seven or one pound twelve? I haven't. Everything's gone up in very nice round numbers, and that seems to be going on in the maintenance industry as well. Things seem to go up in very convenient round numbers. But yes, you absolutely should still get your car serviced and you should get repairs done. And uh, yeah, it could indeed be a false economy. But let's hope the person you take it to for those repairs and maintenance is not also trying to profiteer from the current financial situation. The new Toyota CHR has been unveiled. Uh, here are the pictures. I think that's a, a far better design than the old one. It still looks a little bit like like a transformer but it's a bit more pleasing to the eye than than the outgoing model uh, i know it's always a bit of a marmite car but didn't do it for me the main thing is it's obviously going to have the new toyota infotainment system in it rather than the abomination that was in the old one there's the new one it's very very good it's also going to have a lot more space and practicality than the outgoing model. Um, we're not going to be getting the all-wheel drive version by the looks of it, um, but there will be 1.8 and 2-litre hybrid cars that accelerate from 0-62 in 9.9 and 8.1 seconds respectively, with the former delivering claimed efficiency of 58.9 mpg and CO2 emissions from 103 grams per kilometre. The latter will return similar economy, but CO2 emissions start at 107. Uh, there's also going to be a plug-in version of the CHR for the first time ever. Uh, that's going to get you a 2-litre four-cylinder motor that works in conjunction with a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery pack and an all-electric range of 41 miles, power output of 220 bhp, enough for a 7.4 second 0 62 time and 313 mpg is claimed oh, i hate these plug-in hybrid mpg figures they're just daft jacku premium suvs to join omada models in chinese brand cherry's uk lineup so these are going to be on our roads folks the first jacku model is going to be a hyundai tucson size j7 should be on sale in the uk by june 2024 and a uk dealer networks in the process of being set up and could be ready to start showing cars from later this year. New Nissan Leaf Shiro brings starting price down below 29 grand. The pioneer in all electric Nissan Leaf has gained a new entry level Shiro version. I don't think there's anything particularly groundbreaking there, but it's good to see manufacturers bringing out EVs now consistently under the 30 grand mark, something that we weren't seeing very often not too long ago. Council's urged to rethink switch to parking apps and keep cash car park payments. One in five drivers say their councils want to make mobile phone payment compulsory in public car parks. Uh, these parking apps and things have come under a lot of fire from a lot of people, and especially those over 65. Uh, obviously, some people find these things a little bit confusing. Not everyone's using the latest technology and everything like that. And uh, what's wrong with going up to a machine and sticking a quid in, folks? Or if you live around here, about three quid now. Um, it does seem like over-engineering at times. It's great to have these convenient options, but let's be able to use a little bit of cash. Extreme fast electric battery charging tech adds 100 miles in five minutes. 15 global automotive brands validate 100 miles in five minutes charging claim for new battery tech. This has been pioneered by an Israeli firm called Storedot, which says the benchmarks the first step on a roadmap that will allow 100 miles of charge to be added to a battery in three minutes by 2028. By 2032, the firm reckons its technology will mean EV drivers will be able to top up their batteries with 100 miles of range in only two minutes, 
According to Storedot, testing programs were started this year with 15 leading global automotive brands from Europe, Asia and the US, and feedback shows the new battery cells exceeded expectations. Now, if that becomes widespread reality, um, I guess that's taking what is seen as a major negative away from quite a lot of people when it comes to getting an EV. Uh, the fact that you can just top it up 100 miles in five minutes. I have to say that my experience of doing a couple of long road trips, like the one I'm going to tell you about again in a second, is that it's not really an issue. As long as you can use fast chargers, the, the charging of the battery coincides very nicely with uh, the need to relieve your bladder and get yourself a drink or something to eat and have a little rest. So I haven't found it an issue at all on long journeys, I have to admit. Um, certainly not the one I just did in Europe. And if you haven't watched that video yet, I'm going to pop a link up for it in a second. And please, please go and watch it. I don't care if EVs are not your thing. Uh, it's more of a travel vlog than anything else, in fairness. Me and Tom Shorrock, we have a good laugh in it. And uh, hopefully a lot of you will enjoy it. So please go and watch that. But before you do so, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee, I really, really appreciate it. And thank you again to all those monthly coffee members. Right, folks, go and check it out, will you? Thanks.